We're getting into it. Our guest for this hour is seated. Robert Alai is no stranger to the Situation Room. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Thank you. Um, um, MCA for Kilelesho Award here mm. in the studio. And uh, Robert, you're saying some interesting things. Um, as we get into it, let's mm. say welcome to you first, as is uh, Situation Room style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the proverb cities on the islands. Yes, I for the last three weeks, this being the third week, mm-hmm. we've been looking at island nations of the continent of Africa. Yeah. And this week, how many islands do you have? Uh, there are a total of island nations, independent. Oh. There are six. Which one is? Uh, uh, let me just read them for you. Mm-hmm. There's the Union of the Comoros, which the is Comoros, what yeah. we are now in. There's, mm-hmm. there's Madagascar. Mm-hmm. There's Mauritius. Mm-hmm. There's Seychelles. Mm-hmm. There's Cabo Verde. Mm-hmm. And there's the Democratic Republic of Sao Tome and Principe. Prin- yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. But that's not the end of it. Mm-hmm. There are two other groupings of islands mm-hmm. that are referred to as the Indian Ocean mm-hmm. and some the Atlantic Ocean. Now, these are small, small islands in those areas mm-hmm. which also form part of the African continent. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's how that's it very is. very interesting. Yes. Hmm? Very, very interesting indeed. In fact, stories of these island nations are very interesting across the globe. Mm. Now the proverb. Mm. A beggar will not mind being insulted. Mm. A beggar who cannot take insults will go hungry. Mm. <laughs> A beggar would not mind being insulted. Mm-hmm. A beggar who cannot take insults will go hungry. Yeah. The Lua says, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the Lua says, the eh? Chan Onge, which quote? Yes. Which quote what? Directly <laughs> translated is a head swell. That is the <laughs> word. <laughs> a poor man has no what? Shame. Shame. Beggars are not choosers? Y- yes. Yes, that's what they put ah, it. Voila. Uh, a poor man, you cannot have a shame. You know, you cannot. So it's basically. Life is a is a hassle. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> and you have to comply, <laughs> and you have to be compliant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You saying something, um, a lie. Yes. And you're saying that Ruto must go will not materialize. Yeah. No. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that it will not materialize because at some point he has to go. At some point. Then you know there's another permanent seat where he's sitting. Uh huh. So at some point he will have to go home. The only challenge I have is how do we remove him, and what are the options? You know what what do we do to ensure that there's national stability? Because this country is not all about Ruto. It's uh, there are Kenyans. There are 52 million of us. What is going to happen to us when he goes? Mm. You know who takes over? Because that's a very important seat. We have 47 counties, one national government, you know. So uh, you have to realize that the most important seat in the (coughs) Republic of Kenya, beyond any private or public office, is the presidency. Uh. So how do we ensure that there's national stability, you know. So there's a bit of an instability in the country now because of the demands of the of the of the of the people led by the young people of, of the country mm. so my challenge is how do we ensure that Trudeau goes that the country stays mm. yeah and if because there is a how does that make it does it then in your opinion make it impossible because you're having to ask that there's no or i don't want to put words in your mouth but uh, are you saying that because you cannot see a how mm-hmm. then the current movement is shaky no, I'm not saying that because there's because there's a how there's a current current movement is shaky. Uh, the fact that we have a how we have not answered the how, then we cannot s- definitely say that we want him to go now. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the the clarion call for the president's departure, mm. uh, presumably from the presidency, mm. uh, seems to presuppose that there's a a reason why it is required that he departs. Mm. B, that his departure will bring about some solution. Mm. Uh, what solution is this? And what are the reasons why they want him to go? Mm. What is the worst thing he has done since he got to be the president of uh, Kenya? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, what is, what, what is, what, what, what is the, what will we lose if we wait up to 2027? Why he has to definitely, you know, we have to definitely say that we want to vote him out. 
Is it so painful to wait for somebody to vote him out? You know, to you know, I'm saying this because I'm, I'm one of the first people who was very, very much pro the Gen Z protest. Mm -hmm. For the first, when it started in June, I think uh, the first uh, three, four protests, we were fearing with my pickup. We were fearing a lot of water with my friends, you know, to to help them. My own house turned into a placard drawing. Thing, mm -hmm. You know, including my kids who are in year two and year four, mm -hmm. you know, and my, you know, other nephews and nieces who are all in the house drawing you know, very beautiful pictures of them drawing, uh, you know, uh, the picketing placards. Uh, yes, the picketing placards. Mm -hmm. Then it came to the invasion of the state uh, of the of the of the of the, the parliament, parliament. You know, on the on that Tuesday, you know, the dark Tuesday, I, I call it. Mm -hmm. Then on Wednesday. Now there was a plan now on Thursday to go to State House. Then we started saying that, really State House? Even us, we always organized Mandamanos here. Last year, it is the MCS of Nairobi who are leading in organizing, mobilizing. So we know, you know, the risk of Mandamanos. And you know, we don't always come with uh, so many people to town. Mm. You know, basically for us, uh, MCS or, or for us in ODM, it's always to go with not more than 1,000 people in town. Okay. Because you can easily control them. Then mm -hmm. you get probably 20 leaders to ensure that if you tell them to go this way, they'll go this way. If you, the 20 leaders, you'll you'll find they are the most uh, radical of, of all the demonstrators you have. So they lead the other 20. Mm -hmm. You see, so when they come to town, but they also listen to one person who is the party leader. So if you tell them, please don't go to this area, if you tell them, go to parliament, deliver the message and they leave they will do that but this one was leaderless headless i was is not even was is still i don't think that it's uh, what we're seeing now is what was there because it was beautiful you know it was beautiful it was do coming with the two kids mm. Mm. holding their hands coming to, it was like a picnic mm. it was the most beautiful sight you say this is the awakening of the kenyan middle class you've seen the conversation we've had since i became mca mm. i've said that the kenyan politics will change if the middle class comes into the kenyan politics because i, was, I also told you with the example of nairobi mm. where the people are serving as, uh, as as the mcs there probably don't have the capacity to make the laws to make this country serve you. Uh. So when I saw the middle class, I saw Saudi Soul, you know, we were chatting with Saudi Soul and the group and you're seeing uh, Femi Wan, you see all these celebrities. And I say that today you have celebrities in town, the media personalities. I think this is the highest number of celebs you have seen in the street at any given time. In fact, somebody came with the tracks of, of, of for music. Mm. People are playing music <laughs> on, on uh, in front of Chester House. I said, this is so beautiful. But the problem is that I asked myself, yeah, these people are so many. Who is going to control them? Because if something wrong happens, these kids are going to be hurt. Then we started seeing on that uh, when when the parliament was being invaded. You started seeing fifty, one hundred motorbikes coming. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always for us is a sign of trouble. When you see fifty, one hundred, it's like somebody was. And who were they? We don't know because they're not like, our boys. It's you know? like people are being ferried. Yes, and we know we know our boys. Mm. We know our boys. There is no youth used for political functions in Nairobi here, whom you can't identify. Mm. You'll always identify that I want no Dandora. I want you in Bakas because I'm a politician in this town. So you always meet them in rallies, mm. you know, the same same people. The the people who always the border border riders whom you see in town, a good number of them would not go to rallies. Mm. But these young people whom you see with the jacket, dark jackets, and these jackets were different. This is not the Nairobi jacket. Do you see somebody has come from a colder area? Mm. Yeah? And you see, somebody, an MCA is telling you that kuna watu wamekuja hapa from Thika Road. And me, I'm on Koenange Street. So there are people who have come through University Way. I said, there's a problem. I said, there's a huge problem. Eh? Then you see these people starting to leave one by one. Mm -hmm. And parliament was invaded. Parliament was breached. I think that one, I, th I, th I think, I think, I think the, the current protests are not the real Gen Z's protest which we, 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 we we first witnessed. I think it has morphed into something which is more dangerous, and it's it always you know it always uh, had the risk of being taken over by by by, by other interest, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's going to be turning chaotic because now you don't know how to control it, and uh, the police has to use the the only weapon we use we give them either either tear gas or batons or or or, or, or bullets and, and and so on to to control them.
But a lie, you know, mm. once upon a time, there mm. was only one university in this country. It was called you the are. University of Nairobi. Mm. And there were protests. JM mm-hmm. Day, mm-hmm. other times mm-hmm. when people had run out of boom and they didn't know what to do themselves and <laughs> exams were around the corner yeah. and people were not prepared. So they caused a little frack. Mm. I didn't see guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, you didn't she- see? Guns. There were batons. Mm-hmm. There were shields. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And there was, tear gas was available. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, that one has been a constant. Mm-hmm. Why did the guns have to come in? Are we saying that crowd control must have armed policemen mm-hmm. and women who have guns with the live ammunition? Mm-hmm. No, I, th- I, th- I think I think it's also a systemic issue because you know you realize the conversation we're having, especially the, around the development of uh, Nairobi. Mm-hmm. And one thing which I've always insisted here is that this Kenyan society is growing, but two things are remaining behind, and one of them is the schools. They're remaining in their 1960s, 1970s states. The other thing is the police stations. And if the police stations are remaining behind, then the police is remaining behind in our development. If you go to my place in Ahero, where it flooded in, uh, in, uh, in uh, where, which month was that? The, flood the last was, flood, the last, the last worst flood. flood. April, you know, May, Ma- uh, March, March, April. March, April. Yeah. Yes. We had the worst floods. The, the town, police station. The town flooded. Yeah. That police station, you know, is sitting like it's yes, in a valley. I know exactly where it is. And you see how the policemen are living. You know, they're living in the Mabati, the round Mabati houses. Yes, you see? There is nobody who has ever thought of building for them decent houses, realizing that between them and the river is only the dike. That's it. And the dike came down. Mm-hmm. You so see? It means the river came down. I was, I was in Nairo one week ago. And if you go to those houses, the conditions, the compound. Then I ask myself that, is this not a government facility? Who is going to change this? Because, you know, it has to change at some point. If you are going to be served by people who are working in such conditions. People who are actually, somebody put it correctly, said traumatized. Yes. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, if you are going to, because if you, if you, if you talk to the Kawaida police officer, even, even, let's say you go to Central Police Station, or Ghani, which one is serving you guys, industrial <coughs> area, I mm-hmm. think. If you go to industrial area today, you go to the report office, you go to the cells. Is that a place where a human being should be working? Why don't we just invest? We do a PPP. We invest and improve the conditions of these officers because between us and sanity, insanity, mm. are the police officers. And if we have left them behind in our quest to have a modern, you know, proper, well-established country or city, then how do you expect them to come with a human face, you know, say that? So are you saying that we see that played out in yes. the protests that we see today? We see how they serve Where, us. look, yes. 50 people have died yeah. from June yes. to date. Yes. Probably now with yesterday, that number has increased. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And... Unfortunately, mm. the majority, mm. if not all, mm. of that 50 plus has been at the hands of police Yes, during the protests. Yeah. The disappearances of individuals who some are still missing till today yes. have been at the hands of police. Yes. Are, are you making a connection between how they're treated yes. or the, how they live out their existence? Mm. Are you connecting that with the violence that they meet out? Uh, uh, on people definitely yes 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 definitely you know how we how we how we how we treat these uh, these young men and women and some of them are very are have served in the forces for a good number of time a long time how we treat them is going to be reflected on how they serve us if they were treated well they lived in decent yeah, accommodation you know, like even they were able to like, earn really well yes. and there were protests happening in the city i think were, are you saying robert yes that we would not see the killing by police yes. of individuals the level of killing you know killings killings me i believe that it's uh, uh to some extent it will happen because you know you have a situation where there, there's an unruly crowd you don't know. In fact, in town that day, the, the day of the breach of parliament, mm-hmm. I think those guys were in their hundreds of thousands. You know, because Kenyatta Avenue, yo, there was full packed. Moy Avenue was packed. Koinangi Street, you know, now Arambi Avenue, it was packed. And I say, you know, when, when I heard the parliament has been breached, I thought hundreds have been killed. Mm. When I heard of 12, I say, the police must have been restrained. And 
you know it's it 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 works in the psychology because you know also also we need to understand the psychology of the police uh, officers we are dealing with uh, how many formations how many units do we have in the in the control of the protest probably we are the dci you know the dci uh, how do they carry themselves they are they are, they are, they are in, uh, in in camouflage mm. they are in uh, civilian clothes. in plain clothes you know then the the ap which is a bit more ruthless you know probably will not will not when when you give them batons and and ips and, and and guns they probably will be more ruthless than any police unit you have in especially the rdus and the and the so on the gsu like the regular police you see a bit more restrained you know a bit they they they, they, they work within certain parameters because there is a parliamentary paramilitary unit we have in the in the in the police force and then we have the regular who basically you know as civilians in uniform. Uh, civilians in uniform so they don't have uh, much but so the two most feared units during riots uh, the APs and the uh, and the DCIs what have we harmed them with mm. they, are, they don't have a badge when when a DCI officer comes to you here to identify himself he just say I'm a police officer try to show you the ID they don't want you to see the ID because probably when he does something wrong to you you will take you know <laughs> you'll take take the information and use it against him so he'll, he'll pretend he's showing you the id but make sure that you don't see it well mm. <laughs> you see then the they don't have a badge you know like you go to in the in the in the us or in the developed countries they have a badge which they carry on their neck so you are not even sure if these are police officers so they can that in that situation it is very easy to be abused i hear what you're saying i yeah. I, I must admit yes. that i hear what you're saying yes but are we not facing a situation whereby the very texture mm. of the protest mm. is anti bad governance mm. here right mm -hmm. that folks are coming out into the street and they're saying look as a government certain things must happen mm. yesterday interesting we had a conversation about what the hashtag Ruto must go actually does mean mm -hmm. and in terms of what people are really asking for mm. and when we what, talk, what are they asking for? Well, I mean, look, people are saying do do the bare minimum when like, it comes to a certain a number of things, mm. um, and which they've been asked for. For example, mm. can you cut on corruption? Can we see proper austerity measures actually mm. being taken by government? Mm. Can we be sure that the debt that which you're going to come back and ask Kenyans to pay taxes for mm. is actually debt that is owed by Kenya? Mm. Um, and can you make it public? Yes, yeah, for sure. So we saw some of that coming out yesterday. Mm. But can you be sure that the folks that you have who are working in your government are actually you know people of, uh, you know people of, of, high, of, of high standard and mm. stature can mm. you be sure of that and so the the call is that in the absence of this happening mm. then you as the executor of the country have no business being there this is the call this now is, when, you talk, when you, when you yeah. say things like this about you know protecting the police and making sure that they have what they need to okay. in as much as those are really really important things does that take away from the integrity or the character of the protest when certain things are being demanded for i, I think first 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 i would like to say that you know i i hear calls about the the good governance you know and 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 and, and demands for charity and change of you know a good things a good number of things have happened first we have uh, had the cabinet uh, dissolved mm. uh, you know or, or dismissed uh, you know everybody has a, has a interpretation we've had the president say that he's going to implement a lot of things you know he had the uh, the humility to come onto the the platform where the young people were and and and, and uh, you know here all the two three hours uh, him being you know told what is bad with the, what is wrong with his leadership mm -hmm. but i have a challenge when people seems to be not living in reality and the reality is this that you have given him conditions why don't you give him timelines why don't you tell him that we are giving you three months to implement this? We are giving you six months to implement this. Or what? You know, or we, we come back and protest. Because you started protest in June. You don't give him any moment to work. You can't even have the cabinet sit down. This person has been in the presidency for less than two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah? There's no miracle. There's no school also for being a president. He's been in the presidency for just two years. When should you do well, the right thing? When? Um, you know, you know what, what do you want implemented? 
you know, dissolving the cabinet, he dissolved. Those are the people you didn't want. The people were showing off with the money which we didn't like, you know, the, the Sudis, the, the more comments, you know, I told them they have disappeared from our skins, uh, from our screens. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What do we want, what can be implemented now? What can we be served like instant coffee today? In, in these governments, in, in these demands we have. Mm. You know, that's a challenge I have because let's compare with the, with the, with the Kibaki regime. Kibaki came in 202. By 205, she had not done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. She had not achieved much. In fact, he faced one of the worst, you know, credibility tests. We, we a referendum. Yes. And which he lost. people demanded. And people, you know, the same thing. The presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta. You know, people thought that he was going to leave as president of Kenya, when he came back for the second term, mm -hmm. yeah, which a good number, so, some of us in ODM said that he lost. When he came back for the second term, people said, people said that, and, and even the court say that, you know, the the election was uh, was had issues and and you know they nullified the election. When he came back, he had to work with the opposition leader mm. to ensure at least he did something. Some of the things like the expressway were built in record time. The changes in the SG, in, in the in the in the railways to Kisumu, you know, some of the some of the infrastructure, the flagship projects of Uru Kenyatta happened in the second term. So I think that we are being very unfair because this was was not, not our candidate. Our candidate was Raela Molodinga. Uh -huh. Raela didn't get elected. But we are also very much aware that the, we have a nation to protect. And this nation is Kenya. Today, if this country goes down, if this country goes down, the way we are pushing for the protest. To be vicious, we are, we are, we are. Uh, in fact, the whole, the whole civil society uh, fraternity turned into one big Ruto must go uh, movement, mm. without any clear reasons and without any clear timelines. You know, you'd say for us in the opposition, we'd tell you that you know, give us two months, you'll do this, this, and change. if you change that, we'll, 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 we'll work with it. If you don't, then would you come back to Narudi Nazak? Kaya must. Zakaya Shuke. Mm. In fact, Zakaya Shuke came from Baba. Even as you say this, um, you've always been one who said, no, we've got to fight for good governance. You've got to insist on it. Mm. But now what I'm hearing you say is that, you know what, now that you have made the call, mm. you have said certain things need to happen. Yes. Are you also saying now is the time, get off the streets. Yes. And let the president and yes. his government mm. do the things that you have asked them to to do so protests need to stop yes they and do. this all needs to stop and let's see if he's going to do it is that what you're saying yes, yes i think they need to suspend the the protests i think that it's not healthy for the country it is in fact it's working against their mission because they want to see more people employed the young people say they are not uh, employed mm -hmm. uh, we are in the city every day me i work from the city you know because i work in the assembly and the assembly was looted burnt you know we don't have we can't have committees now we can't have almost 60 to 70 percent of the functions of the assembly mm. we we can have uh, most of the time we have uh, the the pre the, the covid era uh, you know way of holding the assembly which is the the zoom yeah so it is very very challenging for us in on on on, on the wabera street where the assembly is mm. i think more than 10 shops were looted including carrefour you know the italian men's where where they sell some of the most expensive places you used to go no no we didn't go <laughs> but the businesses around town you know because yeah. they support you you know the people there mm. you know when you pass in front there you get uh, the young people the 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 the, 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 the people serving clients in those places you know carrefour you know, pronto. You know, in front there, the the the, the, the the other places. But also, one of them is the, the shop which was looted. Belonged to a young man called Dominic Mwangi, mm -hmm. and Dominic is a pilot. You know, he came from the slums uh, of Nairobi uh, and trained himself as a pilot. Then he sells also gadgets on the side. In fact, uh, he sells most of my gadgets. Mm -hmm. But his shop, which was on Wabera Street, was looted. Seven million worth of stock taken all. He doesn't have insurance. Mm. You know, he was not, uh, uh, he, he didn't know that it could come to that. But his shop, which had grills, was broken into, looted, everything cut it away. And these are very expensive because he sells mostly the Apple products. And, 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 and very expensive things taken away. He's taken aback. This guy is in an emotional mess. 
we have rendered very many young people unemployed because of the protests. Who is we? The Gen Zs. No, uh, Robert, come on. It, uh, I need to be very clear. He's saying so because the Gen Z yes. movement has gone into the street to protest against bad government. Yes. Are you now putting the blame on these protests yes, for yes, the yes, individuals yes. who have lost their property and yes, lost yes, yes. life? Yes, yes. I think, I think, I think we have to put the blame on them because, and this is the reason why. You know, we live in a society which has to have structures. If I was to come to this studio and you are three hosts, three hosts without a leader. You see, like, you know, we are in this studio. You are the person with all the controls. Us, <laughs> we, me and the city, you know, are, you know, we have to listen to leadership mm -hmm. from you. You are in a situation where somebody tells you they are in a movement of millions with no leader, with no structures, and they don't want those structures. Every result of development in this country is because is a result of structured engagement. You know, either you're making law or you are, you know, you're leading a movement to to create change. You, you wanted independence of the country. You, you know, you're trying to, to to create a new constitution. You want this thing change. It has to be structured, and if it is not structured, it is prone to abuse. So anybody encouraging people to go to the street to protest, you know, for their rights, however valid they are, which most of us agree that they are very valid concerns and the most beautiful Beautiful. You know, this is the this is the protest every Kenyan has wanted. But the moment they said they don't want leaders, we saw we saw this an opportunity for people who are creating anarchy in the society. Robert, were criminal elements not yes. infiltrate? Did they not infiltrate? Mm. Yesterday, what yes. had we seen? And it goes towards even almost being able to be proved yes. that a former MCA like yourself, who is, who is the, the former MCA? allegedly yeah. was handing out money. To folks to come in and counter what was happening in terms of a, a, a peaceful protest so these protests mm -hmm. if you look at what was happening they were largely peaceful you know, you know in, the, in the in the in the beginning we did not see mm. that there was infiltration by what i am calling very clearly criminality mm -hmm. and i would put the blame on the criminality mm -hmm. that in most times what we're seeing allegedly has been sponsored and been paid for by elements in government or some politicians. Mm. Those are the ones to blame and not these individuals who are on the street protesting against bad governance and promoting good governance. The criminal element is to blame me. I think we'd have to be very careful to draw the line. <laughs> no, I think... I think Robert, I, there were people on the street yes. who really were praying yes. for a situation mm. economically that gets better. Mm -hmm. And then to now put the blame on them for yes. loss of life and property, yes. I think who are these people, very who are these rich. People, who, are these, who are these people who are, who are, who are looking for, for change? And, you know, because, you know, we have calling, we have, uh, the movement which has been called Gen Z mm. has everybody in it. It is not only the people of the Generation Z. No, it has morphed, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah it has morphed, yeah, so definitely. And also we need to realize that if you are going to turn people and call government criminal without evidence, uh, I would say, because, you know... Was and there also, a criminal aspect in these protests, yeah, Robert, yes or no? Criminal. And that's why the police we have encouraged the police to come in hard on the criminality. My challenge is this: that when you are saying that uh, there is an element of criminality, I also they think that there is an element of criminality in because we don't know the organizers, but we know the encouragers and the inciters, the civil society, a uh, good section of the of the of the of the of the, of the community. I, I so much re highly regard and 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 and. and, 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 and always watch for the media you know the journalist who i saw one yesterday going around the city mm. looking for ways where he suspect he sees those group i think those have been supported by the government then you see he goes on on, on twitter and say inject and i ask myself is this a journalist trying to cover a protest how, or do, you know, how do you know he was a journalist he was wearing some no i know some. he's a journalist he's a long time journal for a very long time okay. you know the person i know the person you I know, know the, and i know not only one like three four five of them robert you know there's something that we sometimes forget is the responsibility mm. that we must bear when we t make certain decisions mm. and take certain steps mm. When someone is sensitized and someone is brought into an understanding of what their rights are, yes. among which are peaceful protests, mm. if one is brought into understanding that they have certain freedom of speech, but then also brought to understand their responsibilities that accompany these freedoms, mm. and then what we have seen developing comes into being, 
anyone who has understood protests in this country will know this was bound to happen. Yeah. These so-called criminal elements were bound to come in. Yes. But there's something unique about these particular protests. Mm -hmm. Because the numbers of citizens, of individuals whom one can call uh, rogue elements were in very large numbers. Mm. They were not two or three. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Now, the question we've been wondering here is, our security forces also have intelligence. Mm. How on earth did this large number of people Yes, and I'm sure some of them are also known. Yeah. Managed to come into the city on that particular day in these large numbers, without, without mm -hmm. the intelligence or security people knowing that this was going to happen. Because they were part of Gen Zs, probably. Because you know, also the criminals. Who, uh, the criminals are also that age bracket. Yes, yes. Now that's where you politicians come in because some of these yes that's where you politicians come in because some of these young people mm -hmm. as you have said yourself are people who are known to political groupings yes because the people who fill rallies and come in large numbers tend to be youthful people mm -hmm. so they're people who are known mm -hmm. but even within these youthful people they are people who are given to criminal criminality yes okay mm -hmm. but what you said was within a certain setting they're controlled yes it is known yes and they are put in check yes so let me ask the question differently how did so many such people come in without any check? Because, you know, at, 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 at certain point, the police don't have the capacity to check these people. And for us, let, 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 let me just answer you. And for us, like we did in the Mandawan of last year, mm. the people who are doing the checks for the criminality, it mostly relied on us. It relied on us, even for the rallies. When you go to there, we hire the youth. We say that who is going to bring the youth who are going to do the security from Dagoretti? Who is going to do from Mbakasi? Who is going to do? Who is going to check? Because we know the criminals who are going to come here, the young people who are going to, who are probably armed, who have guns, illegal guns. We know the young people who are always carrying uh, nice. Kisu. Mm. You know, we, all, we know the young people who are very prone to causing chaos because they want to snatch a phone or snatch a camera of a journalist. And we know how to track them. Because to Kimwambia Kwamba, hey, where JMO, stop. We know Anatoka, Semui, Mtahi, this is the person who is controlling the area. Because you know, Nairobi is, is, is quite messy. And some of these low income areas you've seen, like we have seen behind you here in Kware, where a good number of bodies were found. Some of these areas don't have proper policing capacity. So it is reliant upon. And that's why you see, when, when violence breaks out in Nairobi, what works? It's called the balance of terror. You see? It is balance of terror, and, and we blamed it during the post-election violence. Well, so you, you heard people say that, you know, we could not access our houses. You know, I, I own a plot in Madare. And, 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 and this community has refused me entry to go and collect my rent. It is because the balance of terror was working. Basically, you people fight, mm -hmm. but draw the line. Say, you can't cross, we can't cross. Until order returns, is restored. Mm -hmm. is restored. Yes, yeah. So, this is what always happened for us. If you terrorize us, we terrorize you back. Because the police is very absent in those things. You saw in a very small uh, rally, which uh, unfortunately Trump was almost killed in, in the US, the number of police officers deployed in such a small rally. Compared to what, in fact, in law opposition rallies, you almost see no police officer. Talking of and that. police officer yeah. is always a catalyst to chaos. Because the moment, the, the man of policing in this, especially in the urban areas, it is not of the modern age. Yeah. We have armed yeah. police officers with only batons in most of the situations, or in some situations with only an AK-47. So you find a situation, a very simple situation, very simple situation, which probably just needed a taser, needed just a pepper spray, just needed a, probably a whip for somebody to just scare them to. The only weapon he can draw is the one he's carrying. So you agree that knowing that, yes, that there are folks who then did actually hire youth from amongst. I, I am not. I am not certain that there's anybody who hired anybody. What I'm certain about is that these elements have been invaded by criminals. And for us to get to the bottom of it, is that we have to restore order. And order is going to be restored by us accepting that we cannot have a movement which is leaderless. You saw in last year when Raela was being hunted like chicken in this town. Uh. When his car was being shot at, you know, with the, not only tear gas, canisters, but also bullets. Live bullets. Live bullets. Journalists. You know, if, if there was a moment where I feared for journalists of this country, because the media van for uh, Azimio is destroyed up to now. 
because most of the journalists were relying on that to sit on top of it so that they can have a proper view from the front. A good number of them were hurt. Their equipment were destroyed from that van. And I didn't know why the police got to the point of, now, if you wanted Azimio leaders, you should have gone for Azimio leaders or Azimio politicians. But you went for the media van, the fourth estate, which was supposed to provide for all of us who are probably not participants in the, in the, in the, in the contest. The view, the 360 degrees view of whatever was happening, they were targeted. And that one was the most unfortunate thing I saw. I have not seen the, the kind of level of violence targeted on us in this protest. I saw Bungay, who was the biggest culprit in targeting us, was just walking in the street yesterday and laughing. And I say that these people are complaining that, he, he, as we did for only one week and 75 people are dead. One week only, 75 people are dead. These people are complaining that, you know, you invade parliament. When we go to parliament, our mm. boys in Embakasi say that you people went to parliament. Mm. The most radical boys in the city said, Mmehingia parliament. Mkakawa kwa sikiti ya speaker. Aki njini tumewaogopa. We are not playing with you again. These guys were basically surrendering to the Gen Z movement. They're saying that, but you know, we have to have a country. Let's have sanity. Let's but, have structures. But Robert, yes. This group is not leaderless. They yes. say they are, but they are not. Yeah. The normal. Who is the leader? The normal, the normal. No, I am actually not going there. Yeah. The normal structure of leadership, unfortunately, in this country, mm. has one problem. Mm. They can be spoken with, mm. and they can be spoken. What is wrong about being spoken? To? They are compromised. They're compromised. Why <laughs> that I mean, is a why problem? If, if you have, if you have a me movement which is genuine, if they are being compromised, then they might also be compromised to cause chaos. But that is to my point. Uh, thank you so much. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Because if everything you've described, especially with the Sufria revolution, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's what I like calling yes. it. It demonstrated in technical how it is that the state have the monopoly of violence. Mm. And if they have the monopoly of violence, the things that you politicians do, you think they cannot do it. Mm. If you people have youth whom who subscribe to your party doctrine mm. are you saying that the government doesn't have the might and the power to do so mm. they have the means call it intelligence call mm. it security call mm. it money they have it mm. and more to the point they know these people yeah and that's that's my fear you see hindu and uh, city mm. my fear now and this is why I, I am standing on the side of the government the biggest fear i have now is that survival instincts might kick in for william bruto today if it kicks in, what will it do? What does that mean? Survival instincts. Is, I finish my time, I go away. Mm -hmm. Because these people don't want me. What do I do? I just be in the office, no development. It is survival. So survival, he will be using the military. It will be using the police. Because he still has control of such. Probably, the people around him might start using the militia. You might see a lot of militias emerging. And this is how countries have... You know, I, the good thing is that when I started my career, one country I worked in, 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 in eight years, for eight years is, is Congo, DRC. And you could see how chaos and anarchy can destroy a very beautiful... And I worked in that country when, when they had four, 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 four vice presidents. Mm -hmm. These four vice presidents were all rebel leaders. And I was working with the UN. And, and this was and the best view I had of anarchy. Because next to Congo DRC, I was having the eastern region, the, 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 the Ituris and the, the Kalemis, the Manonos, the Bukavus, and so on. This next to DRC is Rwanda mm -hmm. and Burundi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? Most of the refugees we are serving were being hosted in around an area called Ngara in, in, in Tanzania and, 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 and uh, what? Uh, Kib Kibondo. Mm -hmm. The four vice presidents who are rebel leaders, imagine a situation where they have met at a roundabout. A very simple thing. Just one convoy, convoy coming this side, one convoy coming this side, at a roundabout. All of them insisting that I have to go fast. I have to go <laughs> fast. Because if I go fast, I am on top of you. You see? Huh? Don't tell the me. ranking. Don't mm -hmm. tell me a fight broke out because of this. No, everybody draws guns. Mm -hmm. Then you have to call the UN on phones and the phones are not properly working the mobile cellular networks were not properly deployed mm -hmm. so in some situations somebody has to be sent to go and look for the un at the basis to come and broke a piece come and broke a piece at the roundabout a very simple thing you have a situation where you have people who are armed as government soldiers or government police 
People are supposed to protect you. They said, we have not been paid for six months. He pesa yenu ya UN, ebuto weni leo. They rob you. They turn on to you. They come to your office. They surround. They want money. Are and you trying to draw parallels? Are you drawing parallels between that? Yes. And, and what's what might happening in Kenya today? Yes, yes, yes. And it has the biggest risk of happening here, because if the survival instincts kicked in today for mm. the president, we'll be living in chaos and anarchy. And one, we'll one might argue, you know, a lie that here we are looking at a situation whereby, mm. in my opinion, it's about time that mm. you know, um, mm. citizens mm. be central. Mm -hmm. when it comes to governance yeah um and not just in kenya mm -hmm. i mean around the continent mm -hmm. so here we have a time where people are finally speaking up about what needs to happen not what they only want to happen but mm -hmm. what needs to happen mm -hmm. in terms of governance mm -hmm. but then these fears that you speak of mm -hmm. i mean and they could be conjecture but all right whatever it is that they now water down mm -hmm. this very potent right yes. that folks have to demand mm. for the things that they're demanding for. Mm. Mm. So rather than follow that line, we're saying, well, you know, if you continue in this direction, mm. what could happen is a yeah. place where there's total anarchy. Yes. And don't we lose the plot when it comes to the demand on government, mm. on leaders, from mm. MCAs, mm. to members of parliament, yes. to senators, yeah. to governors, mm. and then until the point whereby we're looking at the president mm. and the presidency. Don't we water down that call that is being asked for good governance when we say, well, you know, guys, if you continue protesting, what we could have is a state of anarchy and it could become, you know, animal farm all over again where each man for himself and mm. none for us mm. all. Mm. Don't we lose I, the I, sight I, I, I think, of I think, that? No, no, I think, I think, I think, I think we're talking reality into them. We're telling them that this is what we have lived in this country longer than you and never make have, demands in the way in which they're making them no we have made demands we have made a, some of these changes some of these roads are seeing built some of the constitution some of the rights there was a time in this country where you could not even speak freely as you speak today mm. you would be picked at night by special branches I tell or you, my, my, my mp my <laughs> mp from moroni says that with a, with a in fact, the intelligence we have now is of professional people, and and they said unabebo na watu wenyem kono mkubo mkubo na enda kupigwa then unawachwa. You see, there's 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 no better time to be Kenyan, and the beauty of this is we saw for the first time the government. You know, even the achievement. I think you should have patted yourself on the back as Gen Zs and say that we forced the cabinet to be dissolved. Even if they brought some people back to, 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 to the same cabinet mm. whom you think should have not been brought back, you forced the president, the most powerful person in the land, to dissolve the cabinet. The whole media, the global media celebrated you. The UN Secretary General, whom I served under when he was the, uh, the refugee, head of the refugee, uh, appreciated you. You know, the, the the UN refugees, UNHCR boss uh, then celebrated you guys and appreciated how you guys have led a very powerful and nice movement. Everybody in this in the, in the world, including the French president, you know, the UK prime minister, you say, are celebrating the Kenyan disease. You have appeared in all. You are going to destroy and water down all your efforts and achievements. But Robert, is it the Gen Z movement that we first saw who are destroying things or is it people who have come in and have co-opted themselves into the movement and who have created an, altern an alternate narrative to what was there. Because the alternate you. narrative seems to be mayhem, chaos, like what happened in Kitengela. Mm. Are we saying that the Gen Zs whom we first saw mm. are the very people who went and caused that mayhem mm. and destruction? I'll, 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 I'll tell you one simple thing, then you can draw the conclusion, because I don't want um, anybody to, to threaten a standard media group with a, with a suit. What, 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 when, so do when, we need to say that these are your words, the next words that you're about to speak yes, are yes, yours? Okay, I, my, <laughs> <laughs> you see, when, the, when, when Parliament was breached, then on Wednesday we were encouraging people to go to, 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 to state house. Then we, some of us realized and say that you guys are going to state house, and oh. also, you know, people are living in state house, and some of the security officers are our brothers and sisters and they would share and tell you that boss we have been given express orders and this is what we are supposed to do kindly tell these young people we love them mm. don't come just don't come we don't want to because you know a normal police officer will not shoot there's no police officer who will kill two three four five ten demonstrators pop pop then again another one then another one the moment he, he shoots one and he sees blood the conscience will kick in. Trigger, his conscience is triggered? Is that what yes, and the next shots you'll see, even in parliament, that's mm. why, despite the breach by hundreds, thousands probably, yeah, 
only 12 and one life lost is one too many i yes, agree indeed. i agree but 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 i can tell you that the number when i saw it in the morning i see it only those guys were were, were, were very restrained yeah. and i received a call on that thursday i was going to a, to a media station and they told me that boss why are you telling people not to go to state house uh, he's a very powerful person it was the last government probably one of the most powerful people I've ever uh -huh. spoken to in my life. Uh -huh. Why are you telling people not to go to prison? I said, mm. can you guys are part of this thing? No, we just want, uh, can you guys mobilize? You go as a meal. Okay. Okay. Our last question, because our time is running out, Robert. Um, mm. Is there a place for talks? Broad-based government is what the president has yeah. said. We have to talk. Is there, what do you think about the current dialogue that is being asked for at the moment? I, I, I support it fully. You know, the president has to talk to, to, to political leaders. You know, the, the unfortunate bit for the Gen Zs who don't want any politician, you know, talking about uh, their plight or probably they want politicians to address their plight, but they don't want politicians in any conversation. Mm. It's very, it is very it's ironical. But, uh, I think it has to be addressed politically, uh. and and because this is a country led by a, through a democratic political process, uh, I think that the politicians from both sides have to talk. I think the president has to reach out, uh, which I hear that he has reached out. I'm seeing from the various newspaper, it is the uh. Marazimio, ODM, and so on. Uh, I've reached out and he's trying to to, to bring uh, some members into a broad-based government. I really support that, and I think it has to happen very fast because when we realize that we have a country to protect and save and 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 and, 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 and nurture, I think it's when everybody would would realize that we have lived a, a level of democratic maturity. But also, I ask my 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 my, my prayers because I, I don't believe it's a Gen Z anymore. Mm. Even the people who held a memorial concert for Gen Z didn't include any single person below the age of forty in that concert but i would urge them this that you need to realize that any movement without leadership is bound to to cause chaos and you have to trust one person in the world one person in the world can you get that one person in the world who can speak for you mm. yeah Thanks Even for your insights. Don't trust. <laughs> Thanks for your insights this morning. Robert Alai, member of the County Assembly, Nairobi. Thank Akile Leshwa Ward, thank you so much for being here this morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.